Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is me going with Q2 of the weekly contest 220 Elite Code. Uh, maximum Eurasia value. So hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about this problem and just in general. Uh, I'm going to go over my thought process as well as the solution during the contest. Um, so I solved this during the contest. Um, and yeah. So the key thing to notice is that you know, for these kind of problems, well, maybe the one of the first things that I would take a look at is just the, the constraints. Because if n is small enough, then obviously you just do two for loops, n square, and that's like most naive way, most straightforward way, uh, and that's fine, right? But in this case, n is equal to 10 to the fifth, 100,000. 100,000 squares can be too slow for most computers, um, and that's the test case is weak, which is not something that you should rely on in general. But yeah, so we're trying to find a linear-ish or n log n solution. So for this, the way that I did it was by a sliding window. So the key thing to for sliding window is to just recognize that you know there's an invariant that you're trying to hold on to, right? So something that doesn't change, something that as soon as you um and and in the, and we'll go over my thought process even more, but something that when you change it 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 stays the same, right? And for this problem. Uh, one keyword for me is just noticing subarray, and by only and only one subarray, right? So subarray is just a continuous um, list inside an array, if you will. Um, and because of that, we know that this that we can move left and move right in a in a sort of way, and and that's basically um, how I did it. Because um, so basically. The reason why this works is that, okay, if there's a subarray that uh, satisfies these conditions, meaning containing unique elements, if you add one more unique element in that way, um, that's always going to give you a bigger answer, right? Um, or, well, um, and the key thing to also notice that all the numbers are positive to make that true. Um, you may not notice that, but um, but if it has negative number, then that that condition is no longer true, and the, the sliding window may be a little or a lot trickier. Um, so yeah, so knowing that it's positive, you always want to be greedy, meaning that, okay, if you have a uh, a window of size k uh, and k plus 1 is still unique, then you want to add on to it, right? And conversely, um, yeah, if it no longer becomes unique, you could just remove elements one at a time until it becomes unique again. So th those are basically the properties that we're looking for in sliding window. Uh, during the contest, I actually solved this in about two minutes uh, because this actually comes up often in lead code. Mm, to be honest, I feel like a little bit less often in interviews, but still a good thing to practice on because uh, invariants and just this idea of this uh, loop invariants are something that comes into play a, a lot in real life. Uh, I mean, a lot of it more trivial than this per se, but it is something to kind of, you know, uh, that helps you debug your code. So all that said, let's go over uh, my code so that we can go over the logic together. And in this case, uh, we use a set to kind of keep track of what's unique, right? So as we said, the algorithm is just going to be sliding window. So, so for me, I always have a left pointer and a right pointer that goes from zero to n. Uh, so when we, so basically, we just start at the point at the same place. I'm using my hands, so hopefully you see it. Uh, I know that I'm not drawing on screen. I don't have the technology apparently. I'm on a, I'm on a six-year-old laptop, so that's my excuse. I'm sticking to it. But anyway, so yeah, you start with the left point and the right point in the same place, and then okay, now you try to insert a, a number into the set, right? Um, meaning that okay, now we want to expand the segment by one one number, uh, or the window by one number, right? Uh, and now. Does this window still have unique numbers, right? Well, it will have unique numbers if if um, this number is unique. If, if this number is unique, then you, you're done. If it's not, then you have to keep on remo uh, removing from the other side of the segment or the window until it is unique. So that's basically my strategy. And basically what I did is, okay, while this number, like if this number is already in the existing segment, we keep on removing it. And also in this problem you're actually trying to get the score by taking the sum of the elements and because of this the sum of the elements uh, every time you remove a number from the segment well you subtract that from the current total um, and when you add 
an uh, element to the segment or the window, you add that to the total. That's basically what I have here. Uh, so every time, so this is actually removing the left digit or the left number uh, if, it, if it's already in there because it matches the right. Because we're going to add this, we want to add this now. Um, uh, number to the window, but before that we have to add the last time we saw it first uh, uh, or we have to remove it first and then we also subtract that from the total and then we move the window to the left. Um, and then after this is done, the the invariant that I talk about is that after this loop is done, oops, after this loop is done, when we insert num sub right, this is guaranteed to be unique, right? Um, because that's just how the loop invariants go and then we can as a result, add this to the total, and then just take the best total. So now you have a snapshot of a window. So let's get the window score, and and that's pretty much it. And then we take the best of all the window scores, uh, and that is how I solve Q2 sliding window. So what is the complexity of this algorithm? Let's, for the sake of um, you know, d doing this math, let's say that the set operations are all one. I know that in certain languages they're log n, and I know that the you know, uh, there are collusion issues with hash tables and stuff like that. But let's just say that this is all one, right? If this is all one, then then what you may say, oh, there are two for loops, right? There's a while loop and a for loop. So this is n squared. Why is this fast? Well, actually, that's one way to think about it. And maybe if you want to analyze it that way, sometimes people will say it's n squared. But, that's, but the other way to say... Um, is that uh, you, you can amortize that out because in a way, if you look at each number, well, what, what what can happen to each number? Instead of looking at just the loops, you look at each number. And each number, well, each number could be added once and also removed once, right? And that's it. it the number cannot be removed or added multiple times. Mm -hmm. So in that case, it is going to be O of 1 per element. So and you have n elements, obviously, so it's going to be O of n, which is linear time. Uh, in terms of space, well, you know, we have a set, and in the worst case, each element of the array is going to be in the set, so it's going to be O of n space as well. Um, that's all I have for the uh, complexity of this problem, linear time, linear space, um, and that's all I have for this problem, really. So feel free to hit the like button, the subscribe button, all that stuff, and also you can now watch me solve it live during the contest really quickly. I actually... During the problem, uh, I solved this without recognizing the sum part. I just thought it was the number of elements for some reason. Uh, and then I had to hack that in real quick. And actually still did it in about two minutes. So, you know, so it's a short portion. Anyway, check that out now. Bye-bye. You still got it wrong. Okay, no, that's not right. What we want is a set. That's not right. Oh, wait. Some of the elements. Okay. Um, hmm. Okay. 
uh, hey, thanks for uh, watching this video explaining the problem. Uh, let me know what you think. Ask questions because then I can answer them preemptively or join the Discord. Uh, hit the like button and the subscribe button as well if that works. And hopefully I'll see you again. Bye-bye.